Hi guys, what's up? I'm Jim from Open Point Samples and we're back with a new tutorial. We got a lot of comments about gated kicks, so we will create some gated kicks and walk you through a few projects. I worked on one yesterday and I'm going to just, you know, walk you through this project and then I'll create one from scratch. So you kind of have like two reference points to work with and then, you know, do your own thing. So let's dive into it. Before I do it, make sure to comment, like and subscribe. It supports the channel and uh, it motivates us to create more tutorials. So. The first thing about gated kicks is you need a punchy DDM kick. You can find a lot of these in the standard standard FL Studio samples, but this one would work. This one would work. All these kicks would work. And then I take this kick and I put reverb on it. And I've used three reverb plugins. So I used for hollow plate, I used for hollow room, and I used for hollow room with a different preset. So then I get three different reverb tails and I rendered these. So now I have this one. I render this one and I render this one. So that's like three different reverbs. And then I combine these and those go into one bus. And then you get this sound. But then I add effects, for example, a limiter where I control the volume of these reverb tails. And then I take the original kick again. And this original kick plus the reverb tails go together in one bus to show you get something like this. So to make the top kick, like the first punch you hear more punchy, I just added a EQ like this and I added some distortion. And then it's just this difference. Then I add the reverb tails and I add some limiting and volume automation. So you get this sound. I added some distortion on the reverb tails and this is just preference, you know. And I'll walk you through the specifics after this, but it's just an overview. It's like the second step is just to combine these reverbs, add them to one bus and you get like some more volume automation and then this is the sound you get because i added distortion and it's really prominent here and uh yeah so it's like three sounds into one thing and then combined it like this and then you already have a gated kick but obviously we'll add more because it's just a little bit boring so i render this always render by the way make one render here render this render that and then you get this thing so gated kick render this here is the render of this and then i add effects this was the sound and then I create an automation clip of the pitch because I want the first punch to be more clicky and then I want to go down. And I did this with Pogo as well. Just add some Pogo. Add the gated kick render pitch, like the pitch automation. Then I start adding some stuff. So the first thing I did here is create movement. So it goes from down to up. So I automated this knob and this knob. And I move it around with these two and then you get this to make it a little bit more dynamic. And then I added distortion. And because this was way too drastical and it was uh, really sterilized on the sub, I wanted to reduce the sub. So there's less width on the sub. So I made the sub mono. So it's just a little bit more tight. And then I added more distortion. It's not really noticeable, but it's there. So I rendered that and I put it here. And here um, I did another thing. So this was the first render. And then I added reverb on this render, put it here and then we have this sound and I added automation. So it just opens up. And this is just to give the tail, like the reverb sucking effect, just a little bit more high end. As you can see, it's this, this sound, just to make it a little bit more driving. And then combined with this, I added some distortion, more distortion, rendered this reverb tail, put it together. And then on this one, I just added some EQ, just to boost the highs. I rendered this and then here's the final kick. I boosted the sub, nothing special, added the ODT, and then I just separated the tock from the bass, and the tock just gets a little bit of pogo, just to make it a little bit more like So yeah, that's how I went from like this sound to this sound. And it's just create a few reverb renders and just work around with these reverbs. And then you get this final thing here. So that was like the um, how to create one kick, and it's just an overview. And I'll create one from scratch so you can see me doing this. So I open the new FOP and I'll start doing whatever I did. I find a good kick. So I think we can work with this. So I take this kick, I put it here. Well, I might want to add like for hollow room. And I render this part here. So, so this is like the first. I can work with this. So I render this. Let's create a folder for it so you can access all these renders you've created. So get it kick two and I call it reverb one. Then I remove this reverb add a different reverb type. So you can choose reverb modes and I might want to do this. This is dope. I dig how dirty that is. So reverb two and we have this reverb and then I create another one maybe with Fahala plate. 
this is fine. And I might want to add more bass because I need a bass end. So reverb two, so reverb three. Then I might want to make another reverb with fruity reverb, just to know you can do it with stock plugins as well. Make it mono because I want the bass. So this is reverb four. And then we have these four renders. So what I can do is take these reverbs, put them there. Now we have four reverbs and we have the original kick. So I make this one unique, put this one in my mixer again. These four reverbs go into the mixer too. And these four get less volume, go to one specific buzz, reverb buzz. Here we go. So now we have the reverb buzz and the normal kick, these two, and they go into one buzz. So what I can do now is select a few reverbs. This one is really dope. But what I want to do is remove the punch because uh, yeah, we already have the punch right there. Remove this, we can make it long so you can render a long kick. And with this reverb, which will be the bass, add to this and then this was just for reference, but yeah, I removed this one. I might want to use fruity reverb instead and this one I don't. So now we have three things, stock reverb. Now I want to make automation clips. So this reverb doesn't need any kick in the beginning. Same goes for this one but here, don't want any punch. And then same goes for this one. So I created three automation clips so I can easily control each reverb volume like this. And if you want to create different kicks, you should play around with the reverb time because if you put it at a different spot, it gets a different drive. Uh, you can just play around and see whatever, what happens, you know. So um, with this thing created, I don't want to have reverb on every sound, you know, or a bass on every sound. It needs to be a little bit organized. So one can have zero bass. So now we have three sounds. This one here can be super distorted. So Fruity Wave Shaper is perfect for this. You can just squash it like this. And then I might want to do the same thing I did with the trick, like take Ozone, remove all these, or just open any plugin that is able to do this, this Imager, and this band just, the sub needs to be moaning. So, and you get this sound. So I might render this without any punch as well. So this is like full reverb V1. And then we take the full reverb V1, put it here. And then we add this punch again. So and you can see that it's kind of flows into each other. This one starts and this one ends and then you get this full kick. So in this case, and I might want to add Pogo. Play around with these knobs, maybe pitch it down. Uh, this is fine. So now I take this one, put it there, add the reverb in there as well. Okay, this volume levels are fairly okay because they're like equal to each other. Then I want to add some more punch on this kick because it's like really boring. Like this. Then I might want to add, maybe change the kick. Well, this is fine, I know. So we take fast this and then we add some punch. So we have these two combined, we put them into one channel and then we can just, you know, render this just to be sure that we have every possible render available. And then we call it like kick one. You need to do this a lot because then you can go back versions and change things, you know, and uh, work around it. So now we have this kick, we take this, we put it here and then we can start adding more distortion. So uh, the issue is that it might get to... Um, I like that it's really lacks frequencies in the beginning. So what I can do is the band level is down and then it goes up during the kick back to the normal amount and then, and then it can go higher. This sound and then I want to do this thing with the sub again where I remove like the sub frequencies like this, this one too. Let's see, I'll get this. We render this again. We just added some processing, so kick V2, load up kick V2, and now we can add pitch. You can remove the, like, you can play around with the pitch. Put it at stretch. Oh no, not stretch, it's changed the sound. Uh, put it on auto. Remove the time, otherwise it won't move around, and then I want more punch. You can hear the difference. It just gets a little tighter in the top frequencies, like it gets a little bit more... Like this, and then we add pogo. We pitch it down. Like this, yeah. I like more to the left instead of to the right. So, so much renders. Kick, render, kick, V3. We take this render again. And then I take, let's see, kick, V3. And then we just need to post-process a little bit. And that just means adding some more distortion, uh, OTT, compression, all this stuff. So then we take like distortion. Here it is. Can we automate this? That would be really dope. 
Okay, so this will be to make the tail more distorted because I don't want this punch to be distorted at all. Just want the tail to be uh, more like this. This is fine. Then I take um, parametric EQ and then I want the end part to get more drive. Like I want to have a little bit more effect like this. This is fine. We add compression and limiting and all this stuff because it starts to clip. And we want the punch to be equally as loud as bass tail so well okay so this is getting uh pretty drastical but let's see render kick four so it's really important that you keep rendering and it's uh sorry if i'm not giving like a lot of feedback while i'm doing this it's just like also i'm just improvising you know and it's not that i work with a set of rules but i'll give a small recap on what you really need to do after this is finished i'm just trying to finish this kick real quick so and I might want to add like some kind of talk. Um, and we have a lot of talks in our Criminal Rasta kicks back here. This one, and then I pitch it down. You can do this, you know, it's not illegal to combine samples. So we take this one and we take this one we, because I want the punch to have a little bit more, um, more power. And in this case, it really helps to bring out the, um, the talk. So the thing that just needs to happen right now is have a little bit more punch. And that's it, actually. Just take the original kick, edit it here, put this here. And oh, these two need to go to this one, this one as well. And then we get... Let's see? I don't think that it needs that much punch. Also not bass, it's just to accentuate, so... So yeah, I guess this is fine for now, you know, uh, it's not the best kick, but final, here you go. So now we have this kick created and we have all these renders and it's nice to have these renders because like if you do this daily, make like a lot of samples, at some point you'll have like 1000 samples to create other kicks from, so... Well, that's a gated kick, you know, um, I hope that was the one you're looking for. But yeah, just to recap, what you really need to do is create multiple reverb renders so you can get these renders and play around with them and add layers. Then you just need to add distortion, really drastic distortion. And then you add the punch again, make the reverb automate with volume, then like make some movement in the EQ, do this thing where you might want to change like the pitch should get more or less, okay, like this difference. So... Like this already on another kick, so... Or... Like if we take this, and we put it like here, I don't know, and we add another distortion, that's another kick. Yeah, so just work around, play around with pitch, with the movement in the queue, volume automation on the reverb, different reverb renders, add a lot of distortion and make it clean and make sure that the punch and the bass still is equally as loud and maybe add some more punch here and make sure you make a lot of renders. And then you get something like this, you know, but yeah, uh, you can get the FLP of this one and the one I showed before for free in the description. Make sure to download it and um, drop more comments, likes and subscribes and whatever. It helps us a lot. And uh, make sure to let us know what you want to see in the future on this channel as well. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this kick and I uh, hope you have a nice day. Bye.